love is our religion. That is so true. So true. And Barbara, wow. I, <laughs> I, this is just every week it just gets more uh, real. What does uh, Mark Anthony Lord says? This, must, this is so real it must be true. This is so real it must be true. As I was uh, thinking about this month and service and how we would, what I would talk about, and, and it came up that service was the topic for today because that's the, the theme for the New Thought-a-thon. And uh, I was talking to my brother this week, and he reminded me of uh, a woman in our, in our family. Uh, you know, my grandfather had 16 brothers and sisters, so when the Rambos get together, just <laughs> that's just that's just Alonzo. Alonzo had four brothers. One of his brothers, Zyrus, Zyr, uh, Dar- Darius, had 10 kids. Nadan had eight kids. And poor Benjamin only had four. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know what was up with him. So when the family reunion gets together, it's huge. You know, it's l- they rent out the whole southern half of the El Dorado Park down there off, off the 605 freeway for the family reunion. It's, it's, that, it's that big. And uh, there's a woman who's, who's there, and we call her Aunt Mama. She's a little bit like Barbara. Call her Ain't Mama, because uh, she ain't your mama, but she acts like it. <laughs> you know, she's always there to tell you what's going on. What you should, boy, here's what you should do. <laughs> but one of the things she says is that rent is what you pay for living. It's a, it's it's rent is is service. Service is your rent paid for living on the planet. Service is your rent paid for living on the planet. I love that. We're here. What's our rent? Service. Rent is due. Rent is due. She's so sweet. But it also makes me wonder, what is your rent? What is each of ours individual rent? What do, what are we charged to pay on this planet? Ernest Holmes talks about this. He says, when thinking about the rent, he says, we can only give what we have. That's the only merchandise there is on the cosmic shelf. The only merchandise that either one of us, either one of us has, is our special gift that we get to bring. Like Jamie brings music. Like Dominic brings every single uh, movie that you need to know anything about. He's got the info. That Rob brings that beautiful God voice to the stage when he speaks. We all have these various gifts. Dorothy's bringing this, this great play that we'll be talking about. What is it? Dave and the Drunken Monkey? Wow. <laughs> Right, But I also wonder how many of us might be practicing rent control, (laughs) right? Where we're just not not quite giving it, or we're only giving this much because we haven't decided to give any more. We're stuck at a particular level of giving. Can we open up? Can we do more than a 3% increase in our giving each year? That's the question. That's the opportunity that lands before us. Dr. Holmes says that one of our great troubles is that we do not live naturally and spontaneously, that most everyone is afraid to be himself or herself. And we are. We get taught to be afraid to be ourselves. We talk about this a lot. I talk about this a lot because it's something that's on my mind, the messages that we receive. I I almost don't want to watch TV anymore because it's so hard to get past the commercials. And now the commercials have gone into the shows and the show themes are also the same idea is that there's, we're just not enough. The car's not the right car. The deodorant's not the right deodorant. Your breath stinks. Your clothes are not good. It's like, man, you watch it for a little bit of TV. You got it. I think it might be maybe the therapists have gotten together with the Madison Avenue folks to beef up their business because we're all going to work. We're all going to the couch with some kind of phobia or neurosis or something because of watching and hearing all the messages that are just being broadcast out to us on a regular basis, telling us that we should be afraid to be ourselves. We shouldn't stand up to be who we really want to be. But the deal is we're supposed to and there's something within us I was sharing with a friend the other night that back in the day when I was in the in the broadcast business The the weather department studio uh, the weather department was always in the studio It wasn't in the newsroom and the reporters would come from the newsroom and they would sit at my desk and they would tell me all their problems like I cared (laughs) You know and they'd ask my advice like I had any and then I lost that job and I started training to do this thing and and one day I was sitting in class and I was journaling about our our journey here and I realized 
for 36 years at broadcasting, I had been doing ministry. I'd been sitting there listening to those reporters tell their stories all that time. Our gift is showing up on a regular basis, giving us information on what on who we are and what we're supposed to be. A friend of mine, Don, rides the Metro every week to work. I used to ride the Metro. It's an exciting experience. It's an ex- It's thrilling and sometimes scary thrilling. And Don had one of those scary, thrilling rides the other day. He's riding on there. And there's a woman that was filled with her own personal demons, we'll call them. And she's, she's speaking in Spanish. And she's shouting to her demons in Spanish. And the other people on the train were either like into their iPad or they're, you know, they're just down like this. Or, or they're looking at her with a, a look of judgment, right? Or they're walking a long way around her to not be anywhere, getting anywhere near her. They're worried about her. But Don, Don had a different idea. He walked up to her because he was getting pretty loud. He walked up to her and he just went, shh, I hear you. And she kind of, her eyes sort of focused in on him. And, and she said to him, Cristo, Cristo. And he says, yes, the Christ is always here. And she went, oh. And she got quiet. She didn't say anything else. She just sat there. And he went back to his seat. Now, what's interesting about this is Don's a therapist. Now, he didn't try to do therapy on her. He wasn't even thinking about the fact that he's a therapist. He didn't even go up to her to do that. He just felt the call to be there for her. That was his gift. That's his gift of service. His heart, it just opens up, and he's able to see what it is that people need. We all have that gift. Are we, but are, are we synced? Are you synced to the universal divine gift that is within you? Like we have to sync up our phones or sync up our iPads or all the electronic devices that we're so happy to sync our cars to our phones so we can talk to us while we're driving down the road. We're busy syncing the electronic stuff like crazy, but are we syncing the cosmic self to the universal self so that we become aligned? That thing about the cross, it's not a place to steal wood to hang somebody on. It's to recognize that we are living in this experience called life that is tied to the universal and grounded in the earth. And when we can be at the center of that cross, we're aligned, we're in sync. That's what that represents. It represents how do we sync up to be in that centered space? right? Are you synced up to your centered space? Because if you're not, and so many of us aren't, we see it in the news, we see it in the world all the time, that hurt is happening everywhere. But the hurt is happening because hurt makes hurt. And we hear people crying all the time because tears make tears. But compassionate heart makes connection. Smiles bring smiles. Laughter brings... It's hard not to laugh when somebody else is laughing. Just as it's hard not to yawn when somebody's yawning. These things, it'll come. I know. I'm going to watch. Somebody's going to yawn in a couple of minutes. See, they're looking. I just did. <laughs> but we can sync up. We can sync up so that we can pay our rent by being of service to the world. Because as Thich Nhat Hanh says, there's nothing but interbeing, interbeingness, interdependence. We are all interdependent, always connected. There's nothing that is separated from anything else. And the connections are absolutely bizarre. Not just, okay, he's singing about, Jamie's singing about the woman with the grits, right, who gave him such love, you know. And then I had that idea about ain't, ain't mama, talking about ain't mama. And then here's Jamie's mother's here from Detroit. And Jamie and I had this connection. We didn't even know. We're both from Detroit. You know, these, these kind of things always are, they're always happening. If we look and really get connected, we'll see that we're all, we're all so well connected in so many different ways. The other day I was trying to, to twist the blinds in my office, a twist little, what's it called? Tilter. See, I go to, the t- I go to the man because the man knows. I said, my, my blinds are broke here. You know, I own, a, I own a blind company. I can go over and fix that for you. Because we're all connected. I didn't, it just, I didn't even realize that, we could, that it could work that way. It's, this stuff is it's just amazing. T-S-R-W. This stuff really works. Or whatever S word you want to throw in there. <laughs> so often, so often we think that things are wrong. 
so ready to think that things are wrong. But in truth, and Dr. Holmes talks about this a lot in his readings in a really sweet little pamphlet called New Horizon. He talks about that, that wrong is not wrong. Wrong is merely right that is misaligned. The right is always there. It's like on a cloudy day, it's still sunny. You know, you look at someone with skin type one, they will tell you that, that a cloudy day, they can get sunburned just as bad as on a bright sunny day. The sun is still out there. It's still doing its business. It's just behind the clouds. So when things appear to be wrong, when things appear to be out of sync, when things appear to need work near our support, need our service, need our giving, and we're looking at it and we're judging it as wrong, that's not it. It's just that right hasn't showed up and corrected the situation. And if we can see that situation that's appearing to be wrong, we might be the ones that can align it and switch it. And turn the right on so in in truth there really is no right or wrong there's just the alignment with spirit spirit trying to show up in a more wonderful way in a little booklet that I read a daily guide I read a woman named Karen Casey wrote that the uh, whole of creation depends upon the contribution of each part for its completion interdependently never singly and alone we exist interdependently, never singly alone do we exist. You think you exist alone? Try to eat. Try it. Can't do it. Got to go to the grocery store. Got to get the food. Someone had to get the food to the grocery store. Someone has to check. Okay, not actually. I was going to say someone has to help you check out the food at the grocery store, but that's not anymore. You are that someone. Poor people losing their jobs over technology, but that's what happens. But the deal is that we are independently, interdependently connected. We're never alone. We always exist. We're always in relation with another. And it's the joy of recognizing those relationships that really makes life fun. That's what brings the color. That's what brings the joy. That's what brings the fulfillment to life on a daily basis. It's to know that we are always connected, always in the flow. And what we need to do is to remember to unblock that flow by giving up our service, to open ourselves up. Because when we open up and give of ourselves, it creates a vacuum in ourselves. We've emptied up a little bit of something, and nature abhors a vacuum, right? So then something comes to fill that in. So we get fulfilled by our giving by emptying ourselves out a little bit through service through exhaustion through work through giving we get a little opening that allows us to fill something back up that's the law of circulation working there was a farmer farm family they bought this wonderful farm and the owner of the farm who sold it to him says and this well it's the most beautiful well it's 150 years old it's never been without water it never has gone dry in drought it never goes dry That's great. So they had the farm for a few years, and the farm was very prosperous, so much so that they decided to remodel the big house. And they remodeled the big house, and when they put the new porch on, the well was a little too close to the house. So rather than adapt the plans, they capped the well, and they built a new well. And then some years passed, and, 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 and the family passed away, and the, the, the father passed away, and the son got the house, and he wanted to do a, a little remodel, and he decided that what he would do is, is change things around a little bit and open that well back up. And when he went to open up the well, he discovered that it was dry. Not only was it dry, but it wasn't given any water. They kept tapping down, it couldn't give any water anymore. Really interesting thing about this well. This well was fed by underground springs that water seeped up through these underground springs through these little rivulets these little rivulets right and so as long as you were taking water out of the well the rivulets stayed open and they continued to flow into the well and the well continued to give water but as soon as they stopped taking water out of the well the rivulets dried up so the well dried up so it wasn't given any water anymore this is us that well is us. If we don't give of our gifts, then what's within us to give starts to dry up, and we don't have it to give anymore. So it's important that we practice this law of circulation in everything that we do. Dr. Holmes says that to refuse to give is to block the channel of receiving. Equally, to refuse to receive is to block the channel of divine giving. When that well was blocked off from giving its water, what it could receive, the fresh waters from the springs below could no longer come in. We block ourselves off by practicing rent control, by not giving all that we can give, we block ourselves off from that opportunity to be more giving. There was a 
Gosh, I got all this uh, remodel story going on. There was a Texas uh, barbecue called Ironworks Barbecue in Austin, Texas, and they had this beautiful uh, uh, brick barbecue oven. And they built a new Ironworks down the road, and they built a new oven, and they started cooking their, their, their really great smoked meats in this new oven. And mm -mm, it just didn't taste the same. They couldn't figure out what was going on. They kept checking the recipe. They got the recipe right, but com customers complaining it just didn't taste the same. You know what they had to do? They had to go back to the old place and take the brick oven out of the old place and move it to the new place. Because the flavor, it had been giving its energy and receiving the smoke for so many years that it was in the brick. Part of the flavor was in the brick of the oven. When they put the, new, the old oven in the new place, Boom, business was back, the barbecue was back. It was in the bricks. It's amazing. The giving, you know, and, and think about when you see somebody, with the, they got the smile lines, you know. We call it the, 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 the character of, of really great aging. That happens, why? Because they've been smiling a lot. And we see the reverse of that. The person who doesn't, as they get older, they got that. You know? Now, what do you want to be around? You want to be this? You want to be the giving? It's this? Or the one that's been holding back for years? <laughs> you know? And I love it. The, the, the back to the, the, the Ironworks barbecue. They had this big old butcher block where they would cut the brisket. And it had this divot in it, this little curved space from all that years of use, you know? That's, that's character. So our giving brings us a, lo a lot of character to our lives as well. But it takes, it takes the, to experience this, this, this service and experience the oneness, the interrelatedness, the interbeingness of being of service is, is an action. You, you just don't sit around and ohm your service into action. You must take the action. You must do something. It's an act of faith to really trust. And that trust and an act of faith comes from when we recognize ourselves as the other and we do the Don thing, and we go up to the other person, and maybe it's shh. But the shush wasn't to shush her. It was to say, I hear you, you know? Maybe it's sometimes that's the action, just to stop and to hear the other person, just to be with the other person, or to serve the food at Thanksgiving at the dinner, or to serve the food at the Samaritan bre breakfast or the, breakfast or the dinner, that, dinner that we serve, or just, just to be present with another. Uh, Robert Frazier in a wonderful book called Heart, Soul, and Self says that your faith is not complete until you wish for your neighbor what you wish for yourself. <laughs> There's a, uh, he's a Sufi, uh, Muslim Sufi uh, dervish, and he talks a lot about uh, customs in Turkey. And one of the customs in Turkey is if you're barbecuing or cooking in your house or cooking in your house, you close the windows because you don't want the smell to go outside because they love the neighbor. You don't want the smell to go outside and disrupt someone who maybe not has the same level of prosperity that you have. So their food makes their tummy hurt. So you don't want to hurt them, right? Because you love the neighbor so much. And if you barbecue outside, you make sure that you invite the neighbor or maybe take the neighbor a plate at least and share the food, right? I must be hungry. I've got barbecue, barbecue. <laughs> yeah. But when you, <laughs> when you wish for your neighbor what you wish for yourself, that's the highest level of service. That's when the heart is open. When you can feel pain for another, that's another way of showing how much you love God. Because if you're loving that other, that other is God, you're loving God. To express yourself in this style is a worthy endeavor to move forward to self-fulfillment. Mother Teresa talks about this a lot. She says it's not the small stuff. It's not, it's not how big or how, or how small your gift is. It's really the love that's behind the gift. How much love do you put behind what you give in the world? John, you guys did it for so many years at the Samaritan Center with your love and your gift. Thank you for that. Uh, back to Fraser, he says, if we truly care for one another, if we truly care for one another, we will want to serve one another. And in doing so, we also serve the divine within them. Our service is a privilege and a gift, both a privilege and a gift. 
That gift is your life in action. That action sparks a level of creativity. You know, we have to come up with new ideas and new ways to do the various things we do. And in that spark of creativity and av- living through that creativity, it's, it's, we get to have fun. It's fun to do this work. It's fun to be of service to others. It brings joy. It brings purpose to your life. So I say to you, hey, pay up. Service is the rent due for living on the planet. And so it is. All right, let's do this. Here we are. My life of service is a life of joy as I act on the divine desire that whispers to me to share my gifts. Mm -hmm. Ah, healing prayer time. Ah. Hmm. Where's the oh? Drop. Don't worry. Leave it there. It's cool. Don't run. You know where he's going. He was going for the prayer box. I want to encourage people to put the prayers in the prayer box. And since God is everywhere present, that I know that as we pray over the prayers that are in the box, that God's right there with them, right over there. Oh, he's walking. He's so good. That's great. He's going to bring that in now. I'm going to. <laughs> Talk about barbecue. Oh my goodness. I know. I know. You know, the, but you got me on a really interesting tangent because barbecue is a very interesting thing depending on where you are. Like, okay, Kansas City, what do they do with barbecue there? Rub. Huh? They rub it. Yeah. And, what, and, and, and in, in Texas, they do it. It's, it's smoke. It's smoked. It's smoked. Now, where is it they put the sauce all over it? Memphis. Yeah, see, everybody, Mississippi, they put the sauce all over the sea. There's tomato, there's the vinegar, there's the mustard. They're all it's, it's all different parts of the country. Barbecue is some intense stuff. Yeah. Peter, what's the best barbecue? Rub. Rub. Yeah? Rub? Yeah, I go for that too. Anyway, okay. Oh, oh, look at there. It's the prayer box. That worked. <laughs> We do believe in the power of prayer and the science of mind. It's a powerful, powerful tool that Ernest Holmes gave us when he, can, when he looked around and he distilled all the wisdom teachings into an understanding. That, that, that in, in many ways, you know, I might, maybe I should do a series on the Lord's Prayer, how perfect a prayer the Lord's Prayer is as in, in terms of a, tr- a treatment, too. So we, we can do that at some point. But what he's helped us to understand is that because there is just the one, and the one is infinite, and because we are all connected to the one, everything that, al- that exists is already there, already present within infinity. And it is our job then to recognize that. And as we recognize that, we bring that into our consciousness, and it becomes an experience in our lives. I call it sometimes the Mustang principle. You know, you decide one day that you want to go out and you buy yourself a Mustang. The next day you wake up, you go driving down the street, and everywhere you look, there's Mustangs. Well, there were Mustangs everywhere you looked yesterday, but you weren't looking. This is the way our prayer works. It brings into our consciousness the idea that we're wanting to manifest, and then we get to move into the action of bringing it into our lives. God's not just going to deliver the Mustang. you got to go to the shop, to the store, and sit with the dealer and do that back and forth, back and forth. Before he gives you the keys, you get to drive home. But you will get it when you do the work. But how do you begin the work? Planting the seed in mind. Let's plant some seeds in mind right now for the desires that we want in our lives, for the desires we want for others, in our lives for the good we want to see in the world if you'd like to see some change in life if you want to celebrate the gratitude in your life speak it into the room right now out loud and we will anchor it in prayer together from the silence arises the understanding that there is one life that life is God that life is my life. That life is the life of every person here listening, whether they're listening here live in this room, over Facebook, over our web stream, in, in many ways, just listening in the heart and feeling the vibrational energy that is emanating from this space and this time right here and right now.
I know that various words have been spoken and ideas have been held in mind, and those are all vibrating now into that infinite law that lovingly hears and obeys, that its pleasure is to give us the good gifts of the kingdom, and the kingdom are ours to receive. We are victorious over everything that we want in our lives by recognizing that there is a power and a presence that can use us, that is using us, and that we can use because it is a cooperative, co-creative experience that we are in. God in its infinite wisdom has given each and every one of us life and has dropped its divine spark at the center of our being. So we recognize that spark right now and we allow it to flare up into the manifestations, the demonstrations, and the recognitions of what is true and purposeful and fulfilling for our most harmonious experience of life we can have possible. So we bring that into our consciousness and we make it real in our day-to-day experience by being grateful for it and anchoring it in prayer as we release this truth to the law by saying, and so it is. Mm-hmm.